From dusty roads to road wild, fans of professional wrestling seem to catch on to every little nuance about the art form. But there's one thing professional wrestling fans love more than professional wrestling, and that's proving that they know more about professional wrestling than you. That's right, this is essentially a live version of a squared circle comment section. This is you, Mark, TikTok Tournament of Champions. For those who are new to the show, I'll be reading a statement about the world of professional wrestling. Somewhere in that statement, there is a hidden inaccuracy, which our contestants will buzz in and correct. The only real rule here is to have your answer counted, you must first say the phrase you mark. For each correct response, contestants will be rewarded one point in the form of a pinfall. And as always, this will be contested under Iron Man rules, and the contestant with the most amount of pinfalls will be our winner. Tonight's contestants are the Hoochie Daddy, Ethan James. Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, I'm Robert Stack, and we're going to find out why HBK's pants were so damn high in SummerSlam 93. D. What's up? Uh, I'm here, and I'm ready to uh, do a good uh, quiz uh, thing. Woo! Quiz, good quiz things. And from the Eat My Shorts podcast, it's Justin. hey Hey, how's everybody going? I am the guy, I'm the host with the most, I am uh, the guy who will take your childhood and slap you in the face with it. Well, welcome everybody, welcome. This is our TikTok Tournament Champions. These are three very influential TikTokers here and we are seeing who is the smartest mark in all of TikTok. A lot of people claim to be the smartest wrestling fan of all social media. Let's get to the bottom of it and let's find out. On to our first question. The WWE has had many different eras since its inception. One of the most popular was the Attitude Era, which saw a focus on crash TV and absurd storylines, such as multiple attempted human sacrifices by The Undertaker, the fabulous Moolah giving birth to a hand, and the big boss man feeding Al Snow his own dog. Ethan. You mark. Al Snow wasn't the guy who tried to feed him the dog? The big boss man fed Al Snow his own dog. But the, that is that is not what we're looking for here. Let oh, okay. me... Uh, reread the question. The WWE has had many different eras since its inception. One of the most popular was the Attitude Era, which saw a focus on crash TV and absurd storylines such as multiple attempted human sacrifices by The Undertaker, the fabulous Moolah giving birth to a hand, and the big boss man feeding Al Snow his own dog. Justin from Eat My Shorts Podcast. Justin. You, Mark, that's Mae Young that gave birth to the hand. That is correct. It was in fact May Young, not the fabulous Mula. That was that was one of uh one of the most confusing ones. I was like probably I think I was like fourteen when that aired for the first time, and uh, I just still don't get where they were going with that. But you know, hey, a gelatin hand is is, is still a living creature, I guess. <laughs> I, I do like the fact that they paid it off like sixteen, seventeen. What is it? Yeah, twenty years later with uh, her walking around with a guy in the big hand costume. <laughs> big old hand. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> On to our next question. MJF is one of the four pillars of AEW, along with Sammy Guevara, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, and Darby Allen. Allen has two losses to MJF coming by way of small package. Ethan. Ethan from On the Floor uh, Podcast. Ethan. You, Mark. It's Headlock Takeover. Uh, that is correct. Yes, it is. He has two wins over Darby Allen with a headlock takeover, and he was not letting you forget it anytime soon. It's now time for our first Brass Ring minigame. Brass Ring requires perhaps a little more effort, but in the end of the day, it's still worth the same as a normal question, one point. That's right, the Brass Ring here is much like the Brass Ring in real life. You're gonna try as hard as you can, but in the end, it's still worth one point. This game is called Keeping Up With The Johnses. We'll be moving left to right, starting with Ethan, We're working our way down to Justin. Uh, when it's your turn, I'm going to need you to give me the name of a wrestler who has the name John in their name. I do not care if it is a first name. I do not care if it is a last name. I do not care if it is a nickname, but I do need to have J-O-H-N or J-O-N. Before we begin keeping up with the Johnses, let's tell everybody where they can find you on the internet. Hoochie Daddy, Ethan James, tell the people where they can find you. Well, you can always find me at On a Forklift Podcast live every Thursday night at the On a Forklift Wrestling Podcast on YouTube. You can also find us on all the socials at On a Forklift. And you can see myself, the Hoochie Daddy, Ethan James, and my partner, Anthony Coleman Jr., as we take on Grim Reality at FU Wrestling's TGIFU, taking place on September 1st from Renegades Bar and Grill in Garden City, Michigan. If he's half as good in the ring as he is on this show, no one stands a chance. I predict new tag team champions in that promotion's future. D, tell the people where they can find you. 
Well, if you find me enjoyable today, you can find me on the Specifically Devoid podcast on YouTube or any other place you can find a podcast. Me and my friend Micah talk wrestling. We talk a bunch of other stuff. We have some game shows. All of that. Check that out. Specifically Devoid is also on X or Twitter or whatever the heck you want to call it these days. I believe we're also on TikTok on Specifically Devoid uh, and Instagram at Devoid Podcast, I believe. Some of those might be mixed up, but it's been a while since I've had to plug them. Justin from the Eat My Shorts podcast. I assume we can find you at the eats my shorts podcast yep eat my shorts podcast it comes out every friday you can uh subscribe to us everywhere on apple podcast spotify eat my shorts podcast.com or you can find me on tiktok at eat my shorts podcast find me on instagram as well same tag own the whole thing it's pretty awesome we talk 90s nostalgia 80s nostalgia talk video games movies uh pop culture toys uh all that good stuff so you can uh, listen to me and my fiance geek out every friday hey and if you if you're liking what we're doing here give me a like give me a subscribe if you can it is the currency which my dopamine is based off of so if you <laughs> see a button then you can subscribe click it if it's about pro wrestling that makes me happy it'll make creators happy everybody follow everybody on to keeping up with the johns is a wrestler whose name has john in it and his name is john cena john cena that's a great way to start it off d sorry if i blew your levels there <laughs> i'm gonna go with former three-time aew world champion john moxley that is a john and justin i'm gonna go with an old guy big john stud oh i Ooh. love that great answer ethan give me a john we're gonna go back to the well here and we're gonna go with john morrison that is mm -hmm. a great john d i'm gonna go with uh one of the most underrated Johns, in my opinion, which is John Bradshaw Layfield. Oh, underrated. Uh, not the adjective, and not to say that's wrong, but definitely not one of the first ten adjectives I think of John Layfield. <laughs> Justin, give me a John. Uh, let's go with uh, Johnny Nitro. Oh, Johnny Nitro. Uh, uh, let's go with Ethan there. I'm going to go with another one, Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo. And D? I might as well keep it going with Johnny TV. That's right. Who was who was he for Johnny TV? It was that's um, his current gimmick with yeah. uh, QT oh, Marshall and QTV and AEW. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And Justin, let's go with Johnny Impact. Johnny Impact. I'm <laughs> sensing a pattern here. And uh, let's go with Ethan. John Silver. Johnny Hungy. That's a great Ooh. John. Love that John as well. Um, let's go with D. I'm going to go technical, bring it back to the Ruthless Aggression era with John Heidenreich. <laughs> Michael Cole just woke up in a cold sweat somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to go with um, Big John Tenta. Oh, mm -hmm. love me a John Ooh. Tenta. Great answer. Mm -hmm. Great answer. We're going to go with Jonathan Coachman. Um, I Yes, he has mm -hmm. definitely wrestled. He yep. has definitely wrestled. I'm going to go back to the well of uh, Morrison's old gimmicks because I'm blanking. So I'm going to say Johnny Hardy from like a few years ago when he was <laughs> with the Hardys. You know what? That's that's brand recognition because we've only basically talked about John Morrison for the last three <laughs> minutes. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Justin. Oh, just for lack of not knowing, I'm going to go with the well of Johnny Dynamite. <laughs> Dude, what? Oh, no. He no, was Johnny no. Elite. He was Johnny, Johnny Elite. 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 Oh, I messed oh. up. I'm out. <laughs> All oh. right, uh, we're to Ethan. There were two remaining. John Laurinaitis. That is a oh, John. That is a power. John. How did I forget uh, him? Yeah, I still have nightmares. Uh, D. Well, he has wrestled under his real name, so John Hennigan. That is true. Yes, he has wrestled. Uh, <laughs> we only know one John here. <laughs> Cena and about 50 variants of John Morris. Uh, J uh, Ethan. Ooh, um, I don't have anything. No more Johns? I can't pull anything from the well. I would. I wonder what D has. D, it, uh, yours to win it here. Give me a John. Oh, my gosh. It's mine to win it, and I need to give you a John. As long as John's in the name, it's fine. Yeah. Dwayne The Rock John. D will be taking home the brass ring, showing that D really keeps up with the Johnses or just knows the most <laughs> John Morrison gifts. <laughs> So glad I, I've got this brass ring in eight years. I'll be Ring of Honor champion. <laughs> Way to go, Scorpio Sky. Oh, I miss Scorpio. What's Scorpio up to? I don't know. He they got back... brought up on Twitter last night. No, he no. came back for like a week and got hurt again. Poor guy. Okay, on. we're going back to our regularly scheduled programming here. We are headed to the glorious Attitude Era again.
The hardcore title in the WWF had many title changes as it, for a period it was contested 24-7. But did you know it was also one of WWE's longest running intergender titles as four women have held the title. The four women include Molly Holly, Trish Stratus, Lita, and Terry Runnels, who have all held the belt. Uh, Ethan. You, it. Mark, Molly Holly never held the hardcore belt. That is incorrect. Molly Holly has held the belt. D has buzzed in D. You, Mark, Lita has never held the hardcore championship. I believe the fourth one is Godfather's Ho. Uh, that is correct, and that is exactly what I have written down. That is a point for D. Here we have Ethan with one. D scooping up that point there. Now D has two. And Justin with one point as well. This could be anyone's game as we're coming into the second half here. We're going to go to the Ruthless Aggression era here, so try to remember that nightmare. My okay. favorite nightmare. I, you know what? It had some moments, and this is definitely one of the special ones. On the April 16th, 2007 episode of Raw from Milan, Italy, Vince McMahon, being the great businessman that he is, selected a fan as an opponent for the Samoan bulldozer. Ethan has buzzed in. Ethan. You, Mark, it wasn't Umaga, it was Chris Masters. It was the Master Lock Challenge. That was a point of the, uh, that was in the Ruthless Regression era, but that was not this time. Is that earlier? Uh, I don't know if it was, I think it was earlier, yes, mm -hmm. but this was not oh, okay. the one from Milan, Italy. Uh, I'm going to restart the question here. The April 16, 2007 episode of Raw from Milan, Italy, Vince McMahon, being the great businessman that he is, selects a fan as an opponent for the Samoan bulldozer Umaga. The fan scored a surprising upset win for the U.S. title with the help of Bobby Lashley. D has two things. One, you, Mark, I don't know if Vince is that great of a businessman, but the main one, you, Mark, that match was for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, yes, that was for the Intercontinental mm -hmm. Championship, and that is three in a row for D. D, job, you are D. officially on fire if we are playing by NBA Jam rules, which everything in life should be played by NBA Jam rules. Yes, it was, Boom, for, shock -lock. It was for the IC title, and the event was christened the Milan Miracle. Yeah, what an in, what a introduction for a young uh, Santino Morella. Absolutely, your first night winning the IC title in your hometown, but he's uh, he's as Italian as Canadians are generally Italian. I'm pretty sure he's very Canadian. So very Canadian. <laughs> he's extra Canadian. He's like Quebec Canadian. <laughs> He's like French Canadian, I think. <laughs> Can 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 opposite, opposite of Italian. <laughs> Italian Canadian. I'm a sorry. Hey, I'm a sorry. Eh? When you look back at like that era, they're definitely like they had uh, they had a Hispan they had a Arab guy playing uh, Armando Estrada. They mm -hmm. had and then they had Santino oh. playing an Italian. It's just there was a let's lot. Let's not of... even touch on Muhammad Hassan. Oh my God, I was gonna say. Yeah. What about Yokozuna? Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Further back, <laughs> I was lied to as a child. I really thought that man was from Japan. I did. Too. I, I mean, as a child, yeah. When I was a child, like when I was twenty-eight, yeah. I thought, I thought the same thing when they were like, they started bringing up the whole Samoan dynasty. They're like, oh yeah, Yokozuna's uh, part of the Samoans. You're like, the the Japanese ones. Well, so briefly in '96, <laughs> I, I realized I realized Yoko wasn't Japanese. Probably by '96, when they briefly had him talk on WWE Raw for a, like for WWF Raw for like a couple of uh, weeks, he start, he got away from James E. Cornette and started talking, and, and he was he sounded like one of the Usos. I was like, "What the hell's happening?" Like, I was like, "He's not Japanese." I, I watch a it. ton of sumo now that one of my buddies got our, our like friend group of friends into sumo, and so now I watch it and I was like, "Wait a minute." Yokozuna is just a title. He didn't even have a name. He just had a title. Pull was right over our eyes. He, yeah. he fooled us all. Like yeah. I, I think with Mr. Fuji and him, just and him not talking, I just believed it. I went right with it. Yeah, yeah. I just, messed I, up. Could you imagine being like a grocery, like a convenience store clerk, and then Yokozuna comes in, and you're like, "Oh, Yokozuna," and he's like, "What up, Oos?" And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> "Hey, we all used to think Hogan was a good guy. I mean, <laughs> that's true. Hogan odd. was a role model. I thought." Man, the 80, you know, I know you do a lot of nostalgia. Uh, you do the nostalgia podcast, Justin, yes. but man, the, the 80s and 90s, no wonder we don't believe in anything or anybody. Like, uh, Hogan it was wasn't... all built on lying, on, lying to us. All of it was. Yeah. Everything Hogan... we were lied to. 
Hulk Hogan was like, uh, you know what's really good? I'm going to open up a restaurant for pasta, buddy. You do not eat pasta. We just covered pasta mania on an episode, so it's cr- that it's- was... In the 80s and 90s, we're lied to about everything. I thought Elvira was a legit person. I thought Pee Wee Herman was a legit person. I thought Alf was real as a child. We're not going to take down Cassandra Peters or whatever her name is. No, no, no. I'm not taking her down. I'm just saying I was devastated to find out she wasn't a natural dark-haired woman. I should not have been watching her show at the age of four. No. (laughs) But it was on. It was late night. You know, movies. That's all it was. I think about that all the time, like the Attitude Era and what was going on during that time and the storylines. And you're like, I can't believe my parents let me watch any of this. No, we, we in the late 90s, we were rebellious America. Like, so everything, South Park, WWF, everything was just offensive, rebellious. Even the comedy, like, was just... It was just made to rebel against everybody. So we kind of grew up kind of tired from it. And I think that's why it's mellowed out now. Let's move on to our next one. We're headed to the world of Impact Wrestling in the now infamous Steiner Math promo. Scott Steiner cuts a promo about his upcoming match with Samoa Joe and James Storm. Steiner goes on. Uh, D has buzzed in D. Uh, you, Mark, James Storm was nowhere near that match. That other person was Kurt Angle. That is correct. It was, in fact, Kurt Angle. That is four. I was D- saying, D's on a roll, man. His D's hand's like, pow, pow. Like, he's hitting that. <laughs> Let's do it. My phone yeah. screen's cracked at this point everywhere. Glass flying. <laughs> but somebody had 144 and two-thirds percent chance. Right. The sad part is if you sit down and you do the math, the math's not right as in, like, it's not possible, but it's right for what he says. Yeah, yeah, like his, he, allegedly he sat down and like wrote it out and was like, no, this is sound. And people are like, yeah, if you, if you take the constraints of what, if you took what he said as true, yes, his math is sound. But the thing is that kills me about that is allegedly that was done in two takes. And probably the first one was Petey Williams dying laughing over here. Because <laughs> exactly he's just- was that. This brings us to our second brass ring question of the night. This game is called In This Economy? What I have here is a recent eBay listings of collectible wrestling merchandise and memorabilia. Your goal here is to guess the selling price of these items using the international standard of price is right rules, meaning closest to the actual price without going over will receive the point. Our first item up for bid is a 2021 Topps WWE Transcendent Vince McMahon autograph card. What this is, is a uh, collectible card with a signature of Vince McMahon. It is numbered 2 of 10, and there is a slight gold frame around the card. So let's go ahead. Ethan, how much do you think that this card sold for? I'm going to go 200. $200. And D, what do you think this Vince McMahon autograph card sold for? Well, I have never heard of a WWE card collector, so I'm only going to say it's like a hundred. And Justin, what do you think this Vince McMahon card sold? You for? you said two of ten. It was oh. two of ten. Yes. It's do you six. have the card? No, no, I do oh, not have. Sh- the card. No, no. <laughs> I would have just been like, like shows. I'm one of the owners. No, um, no. <laughs> oh, you uh, mean this two of ten? <laughs> would... A Vince McMahon autograph tops 2021. I'm going to go five thousand. Five. You'll be surprised. It's if it's two of ten, if there's only ten out there, it, it's worth like five grand if it's in good condition. Yeah. Um, well, this one, um, this one sold for twelve hundred dollars. That would mean you bid Justin making uh, Ethan getting our first twelve hundred and twenty three dollars, and this was sold back in June. So this is on to our next item up for bid. What I have here is a 1981, the company is called Poppy, P-O-P-Y, and is a Andre the Giant wrestling figure. It is a Japanese figure. Um, It includes Andre the Giant sporting red trunks with red boots. It's ungraded, new in box, uh, never been opened, but the figure is from 1981 and uh, just a wrestling figure of Andre the Giant. And let's go, Ethan. You got that right. The first, you got the first one right. So we'll start with you again. Ethan. It's new. It's Andre. It's new. It's in the box. Uh, figures are kind of weird. Uh, Seventy-five bucks. Seventy-five dollars. And D. Ooh. 
That's making me because what you all just said sounded very expensive. Uh, it had like all of the tickers for action figures. I'm gonna say this is like a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. All right. And Justin, is, you said it's mint on box, mint on card. It's not graded. It is new in box. It's still, I would. But it's in say, package. It is it, the blister pack is still there. I I would say it's it's in fair condition. There is some light denting on the box. It's not something you're gonna probably want to grade. Because it's probably not going to get super high. Uh, I'm going to go with four hundred. Four hundred dollars. Uh, the retail price of this action figure was one thousand five hundred and twenty-five dollars. In this economy, um, this figure sold this for <laughs> mortgage payment, <laughs> but sold. less than some rent. Yeah, less than some rent. Yes, because yeah. America is broken. Now we are on to our third item here. And this might be the coolest thing that I've that I ran across. This is Mick Foley's entire ring worn attire from WrestleMania 22. Uh, for those for those unaware, hardcore WrestleMania match. 22 was the hardcore match Chicago. against Edge. Yeah. This includes Damn. his wanted dead or alive Cactus Jack shirt, his boots, his pants and iconic flannel that he wore during this match. This does come with a certificate of authenticity. It was originally purchased from Mick Foley's eBay store. So it seems like all the paperwork and everything is good. The boots are also signed by Mick Foley, Edge, um, Al Snow's on there too. Everyone who participated in that match or angle. Uh, D, you got that one right. Let's start with D. How much would you pay for Mick Foley's WrestleMania 22 outfit? Uh, how much I would pay for it and how much it costs are probably two very different numbers. <laughs> That's fair enough. What, um, what do you believe it's sold for? Gosh, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to five thousand. I think this is a this is expensive, rightly so. Uh, Justin, what do you think this Mick Foley outfit sold for? Ah, <sighs> Edge's autograph on it, Mick Foley's. Uh, I'm gonna go large and say this is twenty thousand. It's ring worn gear, WrestleMania. I, I'd say it's it's got to be there. Okay. And Ethan, how much do you think that this Mick Foley outfit sold for? I think D is closer, but I got to play the prices right game. I'm going to go five thousand and one, one dollar over. <laughs> oh, <laughs> one dollar. My over. gosh. And I will say you have all overbid on this item. Overbid. Wow. wow. Really? Overbid. And the lowest bid wow. there was five thousand dollars so we will restart the bidding with uh let's go with d let's get your bid there uh i think i'm just gonna go right in the middle of that and say 2500 2500 and uh justin how much do you think it sold for all right we're going prices right i'm gonna go uh let's go with one dollar one dollar <laughs> So, Ethan, I guess it's up to you. Uh, I'm going to do 2501 because 2501. it's not, it's no offense to D, but if it's 20, <laughs> if it's sold for $2,502. I'm shocked it's actually sold less than five grand. I'm, I'm I, am, I thought five grand was a real good price. I, yeah. I, be ready as I tell you that Justin will be taking the point home with one dollar. As this item, it did sell in England. Uh, sold for 750 pounds sterling, which is a mind melting $954. That just seems blown away. If I would have known, I've spent more money on worse things. That's one of the matches that like I was losing faith in wrestling for a bit. And I saw that and that kept me in it because I was at the Saturday night's main event where they set that match up mm -hmm. that year before it was like a month before mania they did that at kobo in detroit and i was at that one and they like i remember I, everything from that match i'm literally sitting like four row like four rows up from the first row your ring level like it was the building sucked but the the event was fantastic that was also the one where you had big show and he, he goes Shh. and you can actually see carlito's chest welt up during the like during that it was wild <laughs> Um, but that's what that's that like WrestleMania 22 run up is what got me back into it after like probably after 18. So that's that's actually I would have bought in that. Damn. Damn. That's, that is crazy. So just keep your eye out. Like 
if you're into Mick Foley, yeah. keep a Google like uh, a Google search going because <laughs> nine hundred and fifty bucks could have netted you this entire outfit, which is crazy to me. That's baffling. Baffling. Yes. All right, everyone is tied up on this brass ring question. Moving into our last question here. And as I do this, it's for a reason, because what I have here is a collection of six WWF wrestling foam fingers. <laughs> the foam fingers include the WWF's um, urn, the urn for the Undertaker, which is a Ooh. yellow urn. A the full size urn, right? Not the little guy. No, no, no. Like the one that goes on your hand. Like a okay, the full size. Thing. Got it. Yep. Don't. I don't know why I'm okay. Ah, the, the number, the mind palace. He's like that. Yeah, sorry. I no. I... So we also have a black Undertaker uh, foam finger. So the finger is black with a purple outline in the standard, you know, number one. We also have a Hulkamania one with a yellow finger, black outline, and red Hulkamania. We have a WWF. Piper's Pit one says hot rod down the finger. Piper's Pit across the wrist. Uh, I also have a Shawn Michaels one, which include it is red with black outline with uh, attitude down the finger. And my classic, my favorite, my holy grail is the Jeff Jarrett slap nuts orange <sighs> guitar with black writing. And Justin, you got that last one right. Let's start the bidding with you. What do you believe? That this set of foam fingers sold for. Mm. All right. Um, six of them. Probably for a lot. Uh, so like, like, uh, all right. I'm going to go with $400. $400. And Ethan, what do you I'm going to go with for? like two, 250 250 And D, what do you think those sold for? I was going to go for like, I'm, yeah, I'm still going to go for it. I'm going to go for like $20. $20 for the foam fingers. Um, actual re actually, uh, actual auction price, three fifty five, making Ethan getting that one. Ethan picks up another point way to go. Yes. Um, I'm still in a little bit of shock about the mankind outfit. Mm -hmm. We are moving on to our final question of the night. Uh, as always here on You Mark, we love to explore the art form that is professional wrestling, but we also want to test our contestants' knowledge on more contemporary forms of art. So, tonight's last question. Uh, hands on your buzzers. Vincent Wilhelm van Gogh was a Dutch realist painter who posthumously became one of the most famous figures in Western art history. In a period of 10 years, he created about 1,200 works, including the Sistine Chapel, 860 oil paintings. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Let me see who buzzed in there. <laughs> I'm not on the right page up. Who was that? It was Ethan. Ethan. I mean, I, I know I buzzed. Okay. Uh, it was Ethan. And Ethan? You, Mark, he didn't paint the Sistine Chapel. Uh, that is correct. He did not paint the Sistine Chapel. Uh, that will go to Ethan. He was more of a impressionist painter who painted flowers and landscapes. With the score... Of Ethan with three, Justin with one, and our champion tonight, D, with four correct answers. Congratulations, D. D, you are clearly the smartest mark of tonight's group, which means your wrestling opinion holds sway. So we want to know what is your perfect what is your opinion about professional wrestling? Because at this point, it has to be true. So if you look at what the landscape of WWE was at the time, um, Baron Corbin was 100% the right person at that time to retire Kurt Angle. Uh, Baron Corbin was very, like, he was very much hated by everyone at this point. They already sort of had the fiasco of the early part of his career with, like, the weird wrestling match with Dolph Ziggler. And, like, this was right before they tried to make him the top heel and have him face Seth, and then they went into that disaster of a feud. But the amount of heat he had at that time, I think anyone else on the active roster would have been more of just a nostalgia pop than actually pushing up someone who was rising in the company. Wow. That is a spicy one. I just think of what that would have done for Baron Corbin's career at that time. You know, now he's, uh, in feuds with chefs from TikTok and <laughs> wrestling on NXT. So, yeah. you know, the chef from TikTok's the only reason I'm still caring about him. <laughs> He needs, the, he needs the music back. That's that Chef. <laughs> oh, 
the music 100%. That new song that he had when he was like Happy Corbin is actually one of the worst wrestling theme songs Wait, I've ever heard. So is he a pirate now? <laughs> right? Burn the ships? I, don't, like, I think I don't he's just edgy again. I think he's yep. just edgy again. Like generic edgy, like the beginning days. D is our winner tonight. D will be moving on in our TikTok tournament of champions. I want to say thank you all to everyone who is here tonight. Uh, make sure you check out uh, the Hoochie Daddy, Ethan James, on the On the Forklift podcast. If you're in, I guess, the Detroit area, the sub- southeast, southeast Michigan, I guess is yep. what you say. Uh, uh, what, what's the Chris, What's the gimmick? Like this one here? Uh, oh, oh yeah, your 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 dealio. That's right. Yeah, here. like so. Anywhere the Motor City Machine Guns would show you, go ahead and get out and see the Hoochie Daddy live and in living color. For sure. Justin, as always, is at the Eat My Shorts podcast. Make sure you follow him on TikTok. His TikToks are wild. Like, everything, your whole page, like, immediately went there. And I was like, this dude knows what he's doing. Like, everything's vibrant and beautiful. This dude is the man. So, well, I hope I get more followers. My hope is to get to 20,000. If I get to 20,000 followers on TikTok, I will destroy something with the Sword of Omens. My 10,000, mm. I destroyed a cake. 20,000. You guys name it, I'll destroy it with the Sword of Omens. So give me a follow. 20,000 is what I'm going for. You heard it here. Go follow him on TikTok right now. Stop following. Stop this video. Pause. You're not going to hear the rest of this. It doesn't matter. You're already following him on TikTok right now. We will see you next time. Remember, don't take life so seriously. It's a work, just like pro wrestling. Much love. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye.